Hey, everybody, we are live. Welcome to Dish and Days right here on the brand new Dish and Days YouTube channel, where we recap your favorite soap opera, Days of Our Lives. I'm your host, Tony Moore, and I am joined by my one gaggle of gal. <laughs> your one gaggle. Michael Mattis. <laughs> Hi, Michael I, Mattis. Um, joining us later on in the show, we have Cassie DePaiva and Robert Scott Wilson. So definitely make sure you tune into that. While you're here, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, make sure you check us out on all of the social media platforms. We are Dishon Days on Instagram and Facebook and underscore Dishon Days on the Twitter. The at is still in quarantine for a while now. Forever. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in on this lovely Sunday afternoon. And welcome to so many people who are just discovering Dish and Days. Um, I hope you guys are a lover of Days of Our Lives and we hope that you enjoy our wonderful recap. We're gonna be looking in the chat um, to see what you guys are saying and we're gonna have a good time. All right, mm -hmm. so I feel like the church announcements have gotten either smaller or, be or I have just forgotten what to say now. <laughs> no, I think you covered everything. Yeah, it's like, subscribe to our channel, like this video, tell everybody, done. Yeah. Um, Michael Mattis, what did you think of this week's episodes of Days? Um, I was pretty vocal with you guys. You were I thought very it was vocal. a boring week. Um, this, ha this always happens after we have like a week or two of really good like action-packed weeks with a lot of a lot of stuff happening, and this week was just a lot of talking, uh, just a lot of conversations and back and forth. And I, I spent a lot of time. I was distract, easily distracted a lot. So mm -hmm. uh, it should be interesting to recap because uh, <laughs> I was out of it a lot of the time. But um, there was some entertaining stuff. Like I still like uh, Gwen. Gwen is still like probably my favorite character right now. Gwen and Allie. Are my Gwen, favorite. Gwen is so <laughs> entertaining. Like, I feel like there just needs to be a Gwen spinoff. Right? A, an, on the app? A Gwen. Yeah. <laughs> Gwen are the days of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> she is, she's funny. I thought, I mean, I feel like you, I felt like this week was definitely like an info week um, mm -hmm. where they're kind of setting things up. Um, for it to be like an explosive week uh, in the in next week or in the coming weeks. Yeah. So yeah, it's, you know, it's like, all right, we're here just to like take in some info and then we'll see what happens from there. Um, mm -hmm. But let's, uh, let's talk about it. It's now time to start <sighs> Dishing Days. <laughs> I don't, I don't have the hourglass. So there Imagine we go. It. Right. Um, all right. So let's start with the Ali, Sammy, Nicole, Eric, Sonny, Will, Lucas um, storyline. Um, I still think the whole Sammy, Will thing is being blown out of proportion. It is. I can understand Ali kind of being upset about it just from the fact that it's it was Sammy butting into her life again. Mm -hmm. So with, with her being upset about it, I can I can be like, okay, she's, but Sunny was just so adamant the first half of the week and just so like, oh, I had to tell Ari that she's not getting a brother or sister. And it's like, girl, Ari didn't want another brother or sister. She wanted a puppy. She so why are you so upset about it? And, yeah. and so I, I feel like maybe Allie wasn't blowing it as much out of proportion as, as Sunny was. Sunny just needed to, to chill, which he eventually yeah. did. Yeah. But, you lied to me. He he became um he had an Eric moment where I was like he was like and uh yeah, but luckily later in the week he kind of came to his senses and was like, Okay, I forgive you. It seemed to happen very quickly, but but maybe the conversation with Ari kinda put things in perspective for him and made him realize he was being kind of a a, a duty head. Yeah. I just um I'm I'm glad that they they wrapped that up a little a little quickly and Sonny and Will yep. um, reconciled and and uh, talked about moving forward with another like still having a baby like calling a surrogate or something right or did yeah. I make that up? I think maybe they they said something about it, but I and but of course you know Sunny came down and was like yeah she wasn't upset because she's still getting a puppy. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah so I think, <laughs> I mean, I think at the end of the day, um, it sucks that, you know, things didn't work out, but I mean, they can continue moving forward with, with having another child. And, you know, I, I don't think there's any reason to be upset with Will because um, he, I get it, and and he and he even explained it. Like there was a part of me that was just kind of like, you know, I want this baby, so I decided to keep quiet, um, in, in hopes that like, you know, if if I said something, then like Rafe would be the person that's that's chosen. But at at the same time, it, again, Rafe said no. He said I I would have said yes, but after thinking about it, no. So even even if Sammy hadn't intervened, Rafe still would have said, right. So, um, but I do, but now I'm like, Allie girl, where are you going? Yeah. Okay. So there was a moment either on Monday's or Tuesday's episode before Allie bolted out of the hospital mm -hmm. where she and Sammy actually had like kind of a, 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 a like a mother daughter moment, like a, a gushy moment when the, the baby was in the room. And I kind of was like, oh, I kind of like this. You know, I kind of, you know, I like the, the the conflict, but then when they were kind of, you know, being- um, Civil? Really, yeah, civil. And of course, you know, little did we know that Allie was planning to take off and leave the baby to uh, <laughs> uh, Nicole and Eric. Um, but I don't know, I kind of had hopes that maybe they would kind of bury the, the hatchet for, and which I think they did for at least a moment, but Allie is still like, nope, I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gone. Nicole and Eric are getting the baby. Yeah. Which of course Sammy not happy about. No, Sammy is like, you will not take it. But <laughs> I'm but I'm also kind of thinking this. At the end of the day, um I feel like Allie is struggling because I think there's a small part of her that wants to keep the baby. The, the fact that she decided to hold the baby, you know, when she, when she looked at him, like, I think there's a small part of her that wants to keep it, but I think because of the madness of the family, she's like, or, and, and also because like, she's young, she's just yeah. kind of like, I, I don't want to do to this baby what's kind of been done to me. And so yeah. to me, the next logical, if, if it's not gonna be Rafe and it's not gonna be Will and Sonny, and she doesn't want to keep the baby, then who's the next logical thing? She doesn't want her mom to have to have anything to do with it. She, like Lucas, if you give it to, to Lucas, is just like Sammy having it. So then, right. and then I don't think Kate wants to raise a baby right now. Um, so it's kind of right. like, who's the next logical choice? And that would be Eric, Eric and, and Nicole. Nicole. Yeah, to which because she just the said, Nicole. Or Nicole, yeah. But, you know, they're the ones that took care of her, Allie, when she came to town. And, and so it, it's, yeah, the natural next choice would be Eric and, and Nicole. And they have experience with parenting because of Holly. And um, I, I do like, because one thing I completely forgot about was that Eric's baby died. <laughs> and yes. there was a moment where Nicole kind of brought it up and she was like, oh, it must be hard for you to be here. It was, it was, it was interesting, the timing of that, because Eric had been in the hospital for, like, the entire day, and then she brings it up that, oh, it must be difficult for you, and, and that's really the only time he really mentions it, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, I, I forget that, like, and that wasn't that long ago, either, that no. that, that, that transpired, but it's, yeah. it's one of those things I completely forgot about. So much happens on this show now that it's, like, the brain can only hold so much and mm -hmm. once new information comes in stuff has to leave but yeah. um yeah i thought it was interesting that they they brought that up in the middle of everything i i also like when he said you know i didn't get the the chance to have that moment where someone walks up to me and i'm like oh look there's my there's my child that's you know that's my daughter you know he didn't have that moment um yeah because the baby died you know and be no well, over a year ago yeah so um i uh talk about mad dash um ali just wrote this note and like hit it <laughs> like was basically like 
I, like the note should have just said, what's up, y'all? Um, I'm out. Nicole, you got the baby. Boom. Deuces. But I, I'm glad that they went back and read the rest of the note and read the rest of it without Sammy being there because, yeah, with the rest of the note, Sammy would have got real upset. What did the, I, I can't, what did the rest of the note say? Just like more like Sammy bad? And Nicole good. And Nicole, Sammy bad, Nicole good? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> But like, um, but at, but Allie went in on Sammy when when she was like, um, "Well, you uh, you had Will thinking that you know his dad was his uncle for years," and I was like, "Well, how how dare you bring a family business like that, little girl? <laughs> <laughs> you can't you? you can't read your own mama in the hospital." <laughs> I, mean, uh, I guess if you're Allie. Brady, her last name is Brady, right? Allie, because she's like, she's yeah. everybody. She's a poor man of Brady. But what last name does she use? Do we know? Oh, I don't. Or is Allie it Horton? Maybe it's Horton. I can't remember if it's been said. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't think mm -hmm. it has been said. Yeah. So but then we found out. We find out later in the week that her plan is to just skip the country. She's looking for a passport, and she's just gonna not leave Salem, but leave the country. Yeah. And um, Claire. Well, new Claire. <laughs> like, for, I, like, I don't know about you, but for two seconds, I, it, it took me a while to process that she was Claire. Yeah. She, because she, you know what? She reminds me, like, her and Allie together in the scene, I felt like it was just like two, two of the same people. Right. Like, they, they sound the same, they look the same, which makes sense because they're related, but it, it, it was just kind of jarring because they're, they're so similar. And yeah. I think that's, that's difficult. She was good. Like, I'm, I'm not saying that um, New Claire, whose real name I can't remember, um, you know, I didn't like her or anything. It was just, it, she'll take some getting used to because it was a, it was kind of a, a, quick re, a quick recast. I think like even like, Episode one was, um, uh, names are not coming to my head today. Olivia. Olivia. Like episode one was Olivia. And then next day it was the new girl. Yeah. And her name, her name is Isabel, by the way. Isabel. Yeah. Isabel right. Isabel Durant. But yeah, you know, she's, 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 she's getting her bearings and mm -hmm. she, you know, she already had a scene with a heavy hitter with, um, Cassie DePaiva, who we'll be talking to in a little while. Mm -hmm. um, that scene was 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 a, a good one this week. A doozy. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Like you know, she hasn't really been given a lot of um, other than the scene with with Cassie. I don't think um, she's really been given the the. I'm talking about Isabel, the new Claire, hasn't really been given a good enough material to really shine yet. So that'll be the yeah. that'll be the true test. I think. I, I think the Mattis approval like that matters at all but, you know I think she does have the foundation of Claire um mm. I I you know I'm sure she'll probably be a little more settled and, and comfortable more I do wish that Days would have um did a the role of you know Claire Brady will now be played by so that way we knew right off the bat because her first scene I think we all were kind of like who it is and then it wasn't until like the next scene that Allie was like Claire, and we're like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, and then, they, and then, don't, they don't do that with anybody anymore. They don't do like it, it used to be like a voice saying the role, and then for then it was like a caption on the bottom of the screen, and now yeah. they just throw whoever in, and it's them. They're there. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then it's it, like I, I wish it would have been like more immediate where someone said Claire, so that way yeah. we didn't have to like wait a scene. But also, um, again, trying to get in the mindset, um, <laughs> she was talking to Marlena, and she was like, uh, "Your mom," and I was like, "Who's her mom?" And I was like, oh, "It's Claire." <laughs> Bell got it. I'm like, I get it, <laughs> but but she kind of favors Olivia 
because her her like her eyes her eyes are not as as wide as as olivia but they're as like blue as olivia's so i think right. they really yeah i really think they try to match someone who could fit in the family could kind of resemble olivia um they have so that the essence of olivia is yes. there through the, the eyes yeah 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 she almost she's uh she's almost kind of like if they wanted to age Claire just a little bit, then it would be new Claire, if that makes sense. Yeah, maybe that's another thing. Maybe she just looks slightly more mature than mm -hmm. oh, just in the, in the in the face, maybe. Yeah. Maybe that was another part of it that's jar that was jarring. Yeah. But well, we'll see. Well, wel welcome Isabel Durant to the wonderful days of our lives, and thank we you for have a great week. Two hundred and nineteen people watching right now. Ooh, hello 219 people. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video and follow us on social media platforms. All right. Um, so uh, moving right along, speaking of Claire, she was also in the Ben, Sierra, Eve, Hope and Wraith um, storyline. First off, let's just go ahead and start with this part of, of this, of this storyline, Hope and Wraith. Okay. How do we feel about this? Because they're, they're, they're venturing that they're they're starting to venture back into the Rafe. Or wait, what was their Hafe? What was their ship? Rope? Rope. Rope. Rope yeah. was there. Yep. Yeah, they're kind of starting to like, you know, get into each other's feelings again. How do you feel about that? I was I I I I'm still team Hope and Aiden. <laughs> like, like, Please get Daniel Cosgrove back and yeah, it's not gonna happen. But we, you know, yeah, I feel ya. Like I, that was her. Best, that was her best. Uh, like in terms of hope, like that was her best pairing, and they totally effed it up. And it, you know, it really was. Um, I don't dislike it. I'm just kind of like, yeah. You want to give him something to do? <laughs> give him, you know. <laughs> it's you. You know what it is? It's not. It's not giving you like the butterflies and the excitement. Like when when we saw Ben and Sierra like coming together, we were like, I don't know if you guys realize, but this is fire. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it didn't. It didn't have that. That. Oh, you know what I mean? That you know what I mean? And I'm, but. When when they started to like reconnect in the in the police station, I was like, okay, this is cute, and maybe it kind of makes sense because like of all the stuff Hope has been through, all the stuff that Rafe has been through, uh, it's natural to maybe gravitate towards a familiar love, especially when you're craving some sort of intimacy. Um, yeah. Oh my god, I sound like such a psychologist, um, but um, I sound like a I sound like a Dr. Marlena Evans, um, yeah. black. Um, but yeah, what'd you say? I said you sound. I said you sound smarter than Marlena. No, I'm kidding. Just and I'm oh. Anyway, um, I'm, seeing of, I'm seeing a lot of puke faces in the chat room, so I'm guessing the chat room consensus is no to a, a Hope and Rafe. Yeah, reunion. there's a, there's a few people that a couple of people that are okay with it, and but a lot of people are like, nope, and I'm like. I like it. Like I was on our Zoom screen and in the background was the chat room and all I kept seeing were like rows of puke faces. Mm -hmm. And it, it was it was funny. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I mean, I'm not, it's cute. I get it, you know, for the moment. Uh, but I was still just kind of like, you know, this is kind of like, just like a fling. Like, you know, oh, it's been yeah. a while since I've been with someone. Like, you're cute. Like, we can you're try this. Yeah, we can try this, but I don't think it's necessarily gonna like work out. You know what I mean? Yeah. How do you feel about about Hope becoming a, a cop again? Um, I mean, I'm fine with it, only because I just feel like being a cop ne can never leave her. Yeah. So I'm okay. I just want days to make sure they just like, I guess, keep her there. <laughs> yeah. I like the I liked the moment when Sierra was in the the room with them at the police station, and Hope kind of started back on the the Princess Gina guilt, mm -hmm. and even Sierra Sierra was like, "Mom, forget about that. Nobody cares anymore." And we're like, "Yeah, we sure don't. So please move on." It's like there's no <laughs> point in like at at this time, 
if you don't have guilt for the other times you were Princess Gina, then you shouldn't have guilt about it now. You know what I mean? Like, like there was never a time back then when she came out of being Princess Gina that for a week or two or months, she was just like, what did I do? I feel so bad. It's kind of like life kept going, but this time she's like, I just feel so bad about what I did. And it's like, but you didn't do that. It was Princess Gina. Like, girl, you've been Princess Gina like two, three, four, five times already. No like, No one's blaming you. No one blamed you before. Nobody no. blamed you this time. You're just, you know, get it out of your head. It's just kind of like, it is what it is. But that was a cute moment though, when uh, Sierra walked in and she, she gave a, she walked in like, and I, ooh, oh. <laughs> Dylan what y'all doing? Dylan Matthews in the chat room. This was another thing I was just kind of like, eh. When he was putting her badge on, when Rafe was putting her badge on her belt, I was like, that's a little awkward. Was that, and then I'm like, was that scripted or was that a Galen Gehring uh, ad lib? I think it was supposed to show some sort of intimacy and connection, you know, kind of, you know, putting things back on and maybe getting a little close. I guess it was just weird. It, it was just a little, little awkward. And that, that area, you know, you're venturing down into stuff mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe don't put your hands down there. Well, maybe listen, just I, give the girl her badge and let her put it on. I think, I, I think they wanted to, uh, they wanted to put their hands down there. Maybe. Mm -hmm. anyway. um, so then, uh, you know, Ben and Sierra um, and Eve. Um, and the wig. <laughs> she looked, Eve looked like a cone head in that wig. Like it was so like cone shaped in the back, which I get because Cassie her has hair. A lot of yeah. yeah. So I feel like they should have had like, like a, like a longer wig. To right. maybe hide the bump or something. Or something. I was, yeah, I was like, who lot it? She, but she looked like, she looked like a soccer mom who probably had a case of Capri Suns in the car. She looked like a Karen from Missouri who needs to speak to a manager. Oh, is what she like. I meant to point this out when we were talking about Hope and Wraith. Um, for the first time, we heard. Sierra, uh, Sierra Brady Weston, I think is what is is what she ended up shouting out. Oh, and she middle named Sierra. Yeah, but oh, she, she added Sierra. she added Sierra. Weston to it, and I was like, oh, oh yeah. And then there was, I think it maybe last week the the first time that Sierra called Ben her husband, or someone called Ben her husband, and that was also a moment. Yeah. Um, um, Patrick TV in the chat said, Eve stole that wig from Gabby Sheik from the mannequin she had been used to kill Sierra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, and then, uh, of course, it was a it was a great moment when um, and someone uh, I think Dylan mentioned it in the chat room of Hope um, referring to Ben as her son in law. Because yeah. we all we all know the history that Hope has had with Ben. Yeah, someone someone mentioned it this week, and I can't remember who. How Hope, you know, hated Ben, but came around. I can't remember who who mentioned it. If it was Ben himself, or I don't remember. Um, so now, what we're getting after last week of of Ben being tortured is every time he and Sierra are together, it's going to be this is he gonna kill her kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But clearly there was, there's some resistance to what was being done to him because he hasn't done it yet. And uh, Eve is very unhappy about it. <laughs> and, and yes, but um, can we talk about Vincent being in Marlena's office when, um, <laughs> when Ben showed up for the appointment? And my first thought was Ben, you are like six foot two, Moose Cecils. This guy has to be like, what? Six foot, 5'11", like, you know, average build. Yeah. You mean to tell me, huh? You could take him. Yeah, Is and it's like, 
you can beat the crap out of him, yeah. But do you mean to tell me that, like, you are just suddenly under this, like, control? Because yeah. when he was like, I'm going to administer this last drug to you, I was like, I leaned into the TV and I was like, the door, man. The I know. Door. It's like, <laughs> but I was also like, when you walked in and saw that it wasn't Marlena, what made you come inside the office? Right. Why what made you, you not in? leave? Like, it was under some kind of control, mind control, but it hasn't fully, the, it hasn't had the full um, effect that Eve was hoping for. Yes, I think, I, I, I think, think Sierra, but that's about it. Well, I mean, at least that got his mind off of things. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like though, um, I think he is partly brainwashed. And I think there's some things that he's just kind of like, what is happening? What's going on? But there's so much resistance and so much of his subconscious fighting it that I think that's why Vincent had to try to administer that last drug because it will it will completely sabotage his subconscious. Because right now he's kind of like, why do I feel like this? I know I'm not supposed to feel like this. Like something is wrong and he can't connect you know, the dots. Because um, <clears throat> remember earlier in the week when Ben was in the hospital and they were, he... Vincent had said that he switched the the IVs, the IV drip, but then soon after that was when Ben like ripped the IV out and was like, "I'm going home." So yeah, exactly. Um, Sue Wynn in the chat room said Ben didn't finish the IV bag earlier in the week, so that's that's the reason why Ben isn't fully murder Ben like Eve intended because the drugs, whatever drug it was, didn't go into his system. Yeah. So then Vincent go hijack his uh, uh, appointment with Marlena and uh, give it to him then. Yes, and then uh, Cherie R asked, was Vincent taught by Ralph? Yes, uh, he mm -hmm. is a protege of Dr. Rolf. Dr. Rolf. Um, there was one moment though, we saw him from the back and I thought it was Xander. And then he turned around, I'm like, oh no, it's Vincent. Just similar hair. It's similar Vincent. hair is the next. Yes. Um, Sarah Johnson said, I was screaming, run, Ben, run. Me too. Oh, uh, <laughs> when Sierra yelled at Ben and was like, Benjamin Oliver Weston. I was like, ew, what a, well, that's a name. Everybody got middle name this week. Yeah, they did. Um, so yeah, and so, you know, Sierra is trying to help put help Ben put the pieces of the puzzle together, but he's not also being fully truthful because when he had that dream that he killed Sierra, he wouldn't tell her. Um, but also, you know, he keeps getting these flashes in his mind. At least I'm assuming these are flashes in his mind, but he's not telling anyone exactly what he's seen. Right. It's, it's, it's not clear whether he's remembering it mm -hmm. or if it's for if, us. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna if, go like, with it's he that's what he's remembering, but he doesn't want to say because he can't put all the pieces of the puzzle together. Okay, yeah. He doesn't understand all of the, the implications of everything. He just remembers being shocked mm -hmm. <clears throat> and seeing the the images on the screen, but he's not quite sure why he's having that why he's having those flashes. So he doesn't want to yeah. say anything and why. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. Um so <laughs> I don't know. Like it's. I feel like with this storyline, we're all on edge because we don't know if love will win, or right. if if he's going to make an attempt, or like what's going to happen. Yeah, like how far? What I'm curious about <clears throat> is how far they're actually going to go with this, and and seeing seeing. Yeah, exactly. If love wins, or if science wins. <laughs> yeah. Um, ooh, I, I just... all. I also liked that um, Ben like kind of forgave Claire, kind of buried the hatchet with Claire. Mm -hmm. um, that was a cute moment. Yeah, and, like just gave her like just went up and didn't even hesitate, just gave her a hug. I was like, see, Claire's good, and I do think that Claire is 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 good now. There was yeah. um, there was a moment in the scene with uh, Claire and Eve where Claire, you know, accused. Eve of framing her for everything that happened, um, the bombing and everything that led up to it. And 
you kind of said, you kind of was like, what do you mean framing you? And I thought for a minute, I was like, oh, because there's all that, you know, there was the ring, the dress, all that happened before the wedding. Like, are we, did we ever get like any kind of confirmation that that was Eve that did all those things? I don't know. I feel like we just assumed it was. Yeah, I don't ever remember getting like Eve telling him she did that or or any seeing her like having a flashback of her doing it because there was all that then the bomb, but there's all there was all that stuff and, and Sierra getting drugged and um what was it Sierra got drugged the dress got um Ruined. nail polished on it yes. and the ring yes so we're right now I think yeah we're just supposed to assume that Eve did it but what if she didn't. Because she did seem kind of confused about the the accusation of framing Claire, yeah, and it was never resolved um, in the, in that scene. And I, I don't know why, because I've been watching the show for you know twenty some years, and it's just like everybody gets smacked, you know. But when Eve smacked Claire, I literally went, <gasps> and it was just such a shock to me. And and you know this relationship that Eve and Claire have. It, it's not really fair for Eve to be like, I helped you. I was on your side. And it's like, no, Eve, you used Claire. You used him. You used her to frame Ben. You used her. You, you used her. You weren't her friend. I mean, and, true. But, but she did. She, she did help Claire, you know, but before she completely went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And she also didn't reveal that she was the one that started the fire. She kept, she, she was the one that, that helped that like got the evidence or whatever um to make sure that claire wasn't implicated but i feel like that was more to that was more about ben getting punished for it than it was about helping claire mm. like if it wasn't ben that started the fire if she didn't have another angle for that mm -hmm. i don't think she would have helped claire as much as she did i still think that that I mean, there, there were is unhinged like, Say again? I said, I still feel like Eve is, is unhinged. Like, I feel like she oh. she really is going through it. And and especially that, that conversation between her and Sierra. Like, I feel like, I mean, her and Claire, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like we kind of got a glimpse of that. Like, just a little bit of her just kind of unraveling, but keeping it together. Mm -hmm. Trying to, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to in that, in that wig, honey. And that way, <laughs> I felt bad that she pushed uh, Claire down. Like well, at the beginning of it, she just like pushed her down. Well, she smacked her. She pushed her. My yeah. my first my first thought was, well, Isabel, girl, welcome to playing Claire, <laughs> and welcome to your first week. <laughs> and the and when she pushed her and just kind of walked off, I was like, damn, E, like you just cold blooded. Cold blooded. Um. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, it looks like um, the doc, the Vincent wasn't able to give Ben the drug. I don't think because Sierra showed up, and right. then Sierra was just yeah, and Sierra was just kind of like, if she's not here, then why are you still here? <laughs> and it's like, and, and if I was Sierra, I would have been like, and why this room so dark? <laughs> I know. I know they do that for effect, but yes. it, it makes sense to someone walking into that room with half the lights off. I would, if I was being, I would have been like, oh. And sometimes I wish soaps would do that. Like, just give us a moment of like, like been walking in and seeing Vincent and just being like, oh hell no, and then just like leaving. Yeah. Like, give us a, a like I just instead of us feeling like Brenda from Scary Movie and be like, ah, uh -uh, don't go in there. <laughs> Uh -uh. Oh, you lying. That's how I feel sometimes when I watch days. And sometimes I, I, I can picture it. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I am like eating something. I'm like, uh-uh. Mm -mm. <laughs> I get aggravated. The point I get aggravated is when someone has a weapon that they need to use and they put it down. Who that does? always gets, I'm like, keep the gun in your hand. Because oh, then yeah. whoever's chasing them comes and gets them or gets the weapon and then uses it on them. True. It bugs me on days and it bugged me on Pretty Little Liars because they would always be being chased by someone, they would have a weapon and then they would put it down and I'm like, well, that's your own fault. Well, there you go. You had a chance and you, you had, 
and you done missed it. Um, all right, and that's that's all that happened. <laughs> uh, that's all that happened in that. Mm -hmm. That sort of like okay. Uh, so now we go to Gabby, Jake, Gwen, Chad, Lee, Shin, Jack, and Jennifer. Um, can I just say Jack and Jennifer have become the new Will and Sonny? Remember how we used to say okay. that Will and Sonny were the pop ins? Yeah. Like that. And Jack and the pop -ins. Huh? I said now Jack and Jen you're right. Jack and Jennifer are now the pop ins. And so it's it's like when they were <laughs> when they were sitting there trying to have like a romantic night. And Gwen comes in, she's just like, oh, oh my God, thank you so much. Go, go, go. And I was just like, all I could hear is, do, 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 do. <laughs> there were several do, 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 do moments this week. I heard it, and I think at least three three different episodes. Um, nope. So, yeah. but Gwen, Gwen is one of my favorites right now. Oh, she, just, she, she just is is not having any of it. No, like she is, she is, she's mad that um, she, she does not like Gabby, which that was a little bit of like, of, of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, when, when people like something together, similarities or something uh, between her, Jack and Jennifer was that they all don't like Gabby. Um, okay. But then she was very vulnerable and very open with them and being like, you know, basically me and Jake were about to get it on and film it. And Jack is all like, oh, I know. I hate when that happens. And Jennifer is like, what are you talking about? It's like, <laughs> like that whole thing was like, like I, I felt like Jack and Jennifer felt like they were in a movie and yeah. like the only person that could really handle that situation was Jack to just kind of be like, yeah, girl, I feel you. Yep, mm, happens to us all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then it's like, <laughs> then Gwen's like with the bottle of, of, of champagne or wine or whatever. Oh, there's still some in here, would you got? Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, you have it. I'm like, ugh, but she, but Gwen is just like, I feel like Gwen is definitely going through it because I think she sees, because I think we're starting to see it, that there's that typical days formula of a possible couple. I don't, now I'm gonna say, I really don't want Jake and Gabby together because I feel like it's like a substitute for Stefan. And I don't like that. I would like for right. them to be friends, but I don't want them together. But I think well, Gwen- if, if, they are, if they are gonna, pair them together, then Gabby needs to accept Jake for the rib eating, finger licking man that he is. Listen, but guess Go what? Ahead. That that got them the contract. Yeah, exactly. The fact that he wasn't some stiff, you know, stiff Demera, that yeah. he was actually fun and, and a down to earth guy. And I always feel bad when, even when, it, even when I know they're just characters, I feel bad when, when somebody is getting shamed for just being themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. And luckily Jake defended himself and yeah. was like, I was doing you a favor, you know, you should be thanking me and blah, blah, blah. And just putting him down and talking talking down to him. And I was like, I don't like this. But Jake stood up for himself. And then later, you know, they went and they kind of, you know, when he brought back the suit, he kind of apologized or whatever. And mm -hmm. they kind of, uh, made peace or, or had a truce. So yeah, there is definitely something between them, but yeah, I'm with you. I don't necessarily want it just to go with the formula and be like, okay, now they're together. Yeah, well, oh, I'm sorry. The formula is that love hate, like um, oh, yeah. when, when, two, when two characters love and hate each other. Um, yeah. like, and it, then it, hope that they first got together. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I I don't want them to to go down that road, but um, but I feel like Jake cares about Gabby because because of the fact that he sees how in love she was with Stefan, and how he is a constant reminder physically of the love of her life, but is not the love of her life, and I think the things changed for him the moment that he found out that he was the twin, that he wasn't Stefan and that Stefan was dead. And to look at Gabby and see that her world had just crumbled because she had just a little bit of hope. 
that this was Stefan. And then to see that completely go away, I think now there's just this care for, um, for, for Gabby. Shout out to James Law Jr. who's in the room. I see you, JLJ Media. Hello, kidlets, is what he said. Um, yes. Uh, so yeah, so, um, but um, also we see that Jake is really a good guy because um, when Chad came back from, from Florida, you know, Gabby is still thinking like, you know, I gotta get this fiasco under control or whatever. And then Chad walked in um, and then Gabby and Jake were talking and Jake was kind of like, I think I know what, and they both figured out that it could have been Gwen that tipped Chad off. I was like, mm -hmm. he, Jake easily could have kept that to himself, but right. he didn't because I feel like he's like wrong is wrong and what she's doing yeah. is wrong. Yeah, he doesn't have that. He he doesn't have a um, he's he's objective and he's not mm -hmm. saying he's not like protecting Gwen just because you know Gwen's his lady, mm -hmm. but you know knowing that wrong is wrong, like you just said. Yeah. And so how do um, how do we, how, how do we feel about Chad leaving Abigail by herself in Florida? Like obviously he you know when she he got wind of it he needed to come back to try to save the company but he also kind of left his wife. Do we think that's going to be an issue later on? Because I, I don't think Abigail's going to be happy about that. Hopefully it's something where like he goes down and kind of makes sure she's okay and then like jets off. Um, so I don't know. Oh, and then Gwen trying to do the okie doke by like and make I think she was trying to make Jake jealous, but Gabby saw this, that random oh, kiss. Mm -mm. Before that, the offer of of get in my bed. Yeah, <laughs> get in my bed. And she's like, oh no, I didn't mean have sex with me. I just meant so that just get in. Yeah, Gabby saw it. So Gabby's gonna cause problems again. She always causes problems. Yeah. Um. Oh, and then a shout out to Lee Chin. I mean, can we just have more Lee Chin? Yeah, <laughs> they should make him a, a regular. Somehow, I feel like, like I, I I feel like they should too because it's all about Demera yeah. business. So I feel like they should make him like a regular on there. Definitely, I think he would add a little. First of all, he adds a little um, flavor, we'll say, mm -hmm. to uh, the cast, which is always a good thing. Uh, representation is important. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, I think he's. I think he has the ability, from what we've seen anyway, to be um, a, a big player. They just need yeah. to write it correct <laughs> and make it make it make sense. Agree. Uh, maybe it'll um, happen. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, and that's it with that storyline, right? Okay. So um, quickly, just a reminder to everyone: please, while you're here watching this video, please make sure you click the thumbs up button. Everyone, there are right now currently watching us live 232 people. I should see 232 likes. So everyone, please take the time right now, that thumbs up button, click that, and then also make sure you subscribe to our channel. Right now, you can see all of our interviews from Day of Days, the Emmys, um, and also our Spotlight On interviews, and also our previous shows from 2015, 16, and 17. Uh, so make sure you guys check that out. That's how you show your support by liking us, following us, subscribing to us. Um, that shows your support for all that we're doing here to bring this show to you live every Sunday. So thank you guys so much for that support. Um, we are going to zip through the rest of our show because uh, we have our special guests coming on um, in just a few minutes. Um, so uh, some tidbits that we have, uh, Marlena, Bell, and Claire. Um, basically, um, uh, Marlena and Claire have uh, a very like good chat um, about you know what's going on and stuff, um, and that um, Bell um, has decided that maybe if Claire wants to stay uh, in Salem, that they should stay a bit longer just to make sure she's okay. Like that's kind of setting the stage for Bell and Sean to kind of be more in the fold now as well. Yeah, yeah, so, good. yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it, right? <laughs> Uh, and then Justin and Bonnie. I'm glad that Justin decided to help Bonnie. She's yeah, so I mean, she's so cray cray. Yeah, and you knew, you know, Justin's the good guy. You knew, like, as soon as he picked up that paper last week, you know, oh, he's gonna help her. Which mm -hmm. that's that in his character. Like, it's not really in his character to see someone down and out, even if it's somebody that has has been not the the greatest <laughs> to his family. 
Um, but yeah, like, of course he's going to help her. And yeah. I like that she's, you know, she's appreciative of it. So, you know, again, I, that's, this is another situation where I, I don't want it, Bonnie and Justin to be a thing, you no, know? But I'm, but I'm glad. They don't I'm need glad. to, it'd be weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm glad that he was just kind of like, it's not about you. I just don't like businesses taking advantage of people. He doesn't like people using the legal system to screw other people. Yeah. 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 So I, I like that. Um, Kate and A. <laughs> I don't know about you, but was there two seconds where you thought there was like some little flirtation missness going on? Totally. Totally. Yeah. There was definite, there was definite winky flirtation. Yeah, definitely. And I'm wondering if they're, this is setting the stage for Kate and Abe. I've kind of thought that ever since Kate started, they had Kate start working for Abe. Yeah. Uh, I'm open to it. Um, I'm not against yeah. it. So I I, want- I'm so. intrigued. <laughs> I'm intrigued by it. Yeah. I'm intrigued. I don't know if I'm for it though, but I'm intrigued. According to our den mother, uh, uh, James Lott Jr., they are setting Kate and Abe up. I, but see, but ease us into it though. I'm glad that they gave us the idea, but like, I don't know. We'll see. I'm intrigued. I'm not, yeah. I, I don't know if I'm, I'm for or against, but I'm, in, I'm intrigued for sure. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that was your week of days. And now it's time to get to our favorite part of the show, which are, are our segments. And we're going to start with mine, which is Tony's official three snaps award. Oh, snap. All right. So y'all listen, y'all know I love a good read session and there were two people this week that read folks the house down. So my three snaps award goes to Allie and Jake, uh, Brandon Barrage and uh, Lindsay Arnold for basically reminding people of their past. Allie was basically like, oh, but mom, weren't you the one that was pretending that uh, dad was uh, Will's uncle for a number of years? Oh, snap. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Jake being basically looking at Gabby and being like, but your husband's dead. He dead. He not here. I'm not him. He dead. And I was just like, oh, oh, oh. So yeah. So Lindsay Arnold and Brandon Barrage, you get Tony's official Three Snaps Award. Snap! <laughs> Good enough. Uh, <laughs> and now it's time for Action Action Day. <laughs> All right, still feeling my way around. Anyway, uh, this week's caption that photo comes courtesy of Jack and Jennifer and their reaction to Gwen just all in her feelings and all in the wine. And this week's caption goes to Bizarro Megan on Instagram who has won caption of the week before. She's very clever. Uh, with her caption, yeah, we're smiling. We just got Botox today. <laughs> Especially that one, because this is kind of like. Uh -oh. Yeah, we're smiling. Especially, we just got Botox. <laughs> Especially yeah. Jennifer's face is like, Jennifer, <laughs> like what is going on here? Uh, and that was this week's caption day. Oh, look at you. Um, um, <laughs> all right, and then uh, the shout out to Me World for his oh shiz moment of the week, uh, which we will retweet on Twitter. Um, again, thank you Me World uh, for always doing that and giving us your oh shiz moment of the week. Um, and we will definitely be retweeting that. Um, and now let's quickly go into some news and gossip. News and gossip. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, in case you haven't heard, unfortunately, Spectrum Celebrity Events has had to cancel their two October events uh, for good due to COVID and the lack of ability to hold uh, group events here in Los Angeles County, unfortunately. Uh, uh, the entire year has basically been canceled now. Um, but all is not lost. Spectrum will be holding virtual events with a lot of the same people who were scheduled to be at the live events. So pay, uh, so keep tuned to our social channels, keep tuned to spectrumcelebrityevents.com for all of the latest. And if you're subscribed to their emails, I'm sure they'll, they'll send emails about uh, whatever virtual stuff that they, they have going on. So all is not lost. It's just, you know, like everything else this year, it's gotta be 
got to be virtual. So uh, it's unfortunate, but hopefully you'll you'll still get some some FaceTime with your your favorite day stars. So uh, yeah, just pay attention to our socials and uh, spectrumcelebrityevents.com. Yes. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, show you guys what's going to happen next week. Um, here's the promo it's for Days of Our Lives. <laughs> What'll happen next week? It's been a long time. Phillip's back, kicking off a reunion of the last blast crew. <laughs> out of my system. You miss me? Mm, days of Our Lives. I feel like when I, when I, hear, I feel like that's music you hear when you're like in an arcade, like it is. dance dance revolution or something. <laughs> that is definitely like dance dance, but like you like, know. Yeah. Um, it's. Are you looking? Are you looking? Are you looking for? Uh, yes. Um, because Please. um, J. Kenneth Johnson was always my Philip. I know that. Um, Kyle Brandt and John Paul Lavassier um, all played Philip. Forgot about him. Yeah, John Paul, I forgot Philip for a while. Uh, yeah, but um, but like he's the original Philip. So like I'm I'm actually, he's the second Philip. There was another Philip before Jay Johnson. Jay Johnson was actually recast. There was a a, a Charity Raymer esque Philip before J. Kenneth Johnson. Oh really? Yeah, I missed that. It's yeah. always been Jay, it's always Jay, been Jay, Jay Kenneth Johnson. But yeah, Jay Kenneth Jay Kenneth Johnson was like the the the, the most known Philip other than Kyle Brandt, I think. So it's good to see him back. He looks exactly the same. I know. Whatever he's doing, whatever he whatever regimen he's using, I need whatever death becomes her potion he's taken. I would like some of that. Um, but yeah, it should be should be good. Um, it's going to be interesting. Um, <laughs> Somebody said Philip, whose leg grew back. Um, <laughs> we don't uh, think about that under the rug, <laughs> right? Um, but it's gonna be. Uh, it's that. Oh, there we go. It's. Uh, it's definitely gonna be be interesting to uh, to see like what goes what goes down. Um, all right, everyone, uh, the moment that you all have been waiting for, we have our two very special guests um, coming on and joining us. We have Cassie DePaiva and Robert Scott Wilson um, joining us. It's just going to take a minute because this is technology. So it's like they have to come on, they have to turn on cameras, and oh. everything has to load in, and it's... <laughs> It's coming in nice and what oh, we got. There he, yay! Here. We're in there. <laughs> Hi, Cassie. I'm, I'm Hi, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm so dumb. I'm explaining. <laughs> okay. Here. Hello, Mr. Okay, I'm going to do it for her. <laughs> I, you know what? This is the best part. You get to just sit there and, right. and, be, and be pretty. Yeah, sure. that's exactly <laughs> Me up in the that's country. What, she's too bright. <laughs> yeah. Is that better for Now I look red, but then, that's a... <laughs> And then Robert Scott Wilson. We're here. <laughs> we made it. We made it. We you made guys it. made it. I love it. Yeah. My, now my husband's <laughs> together. My technician. <laughs> He's like, you, you're, all, you're, you're all set up. You can see everyone. I'm done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> How are you both doing? Doing all right. I'm just hanging out uh, on the East Coast for a little bit. I'm flying back finally on Tuesday to LA. Yeah, good. Yep. And Cassie, how have you been? I've been great. I'm up in the Catskills and um, I've pretty much been up here nonstop for, I guess, since like the first week of March. I had to go down to the yeah. city for a couple of days. But other than that, I've just been a country girl. Yeah. <laughs> well, you still look fabulous as always. Are you um, in Boston? Yes. I've been oh. here for a month. Oh, do you love it? I honestly, I'm a little sad to leave, but I'm excited to get back to a routine. You know, I am I am excited about that. But it's um good to go back to work and everything, but it's those fires in Los Angeles look pretty scary right now. Yeah, they're scary right now. So I, I don't even know what I'm gonna get like like what I'm walking into when I get back there, but Say la vie. We'll see what happens. I'm, you know, just 
capping off 2020, I suppose. I know. It's crazy. Well, I can assure you, LA is, for the most part, still intact, but it's Good. super hot. It's like ridiculously hot. It's like crazy hot. So, um, I hope you have a good AC unit or something, because if not, oh, yeah. you're going to melt. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm running that thing at 65 degrees all year. <laughs> I want it to be like an ice box. That's great. <laughs> um, my life. So, let's let's chat about this, this storyline and this... What storyline? The... <laughs> <laughs> You're on a show. You know, this, this little Are show you... called so Days of Our ago. Lives. I, well, I know. I, this was like, this had to be. No, like, 2019. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, first, I want to know uh, from you, Cassie, like, how did it all come about uh, with Eve's return? Were you just, did you just get the phone call and was like, hey, Eve's coming back and this is what's happening? And No, I got your... a phone call and said they'd like to have you back for a short story arc. You interested? Mm -hmm. I said, yes. <laughs> and that was it. And I didn't know I was coming back as a freaking super villain. <laughs> well, listen. I had no idea he was going to be in his underwear either. Well, I want, I want to. I want to know what conversation they had with Rob about this being like. So, going to be strapped to a chair, going to be in your underwear, and we're going to yeah. grease you up real good. <laughs> or did they just say? Or was that like the extent of it? Or was it very like? I, I'm just curious because. Or did you did you show up in wardrobe and there were these nice boxer briefs just on a hanger and they said here you go. Yeah, right. Pretty much. Uh, yeah, all of that is true except I, I told them add the grease. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I told him to add the grease. <laughs> grease no, him I'm up. Just, I'm just kidding. No. Um, no, nah, in reality, I, I read it in the script and it said on there he was stripped down to pretty much his underwear, whatever word they, they used. But it said that he was stripped down. So I was along for the whole thing. And I read that and I was like, hmm, so I'm OK. And I was like, all right. So in my head, I was like, I've seen some wild torture scenes in some films. And I was like, OK, this reminded me if this is what they're going for of like that of one of the Bond movies. And Daniel Craig gets tortured. And he's stripped down naked. Mm -hmm. And it's this wild torture scene. And I was like, so that must be where this is like inspired from. And I was like, okay, I'll stand behind it. But then uh, Ron was actually visiting the set one day and I was talking to him about it. I was like, dude, so everything was great. The, 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 the wedding was beautiful, but um, this stuff's wild. I was like, but do I really got to be in my underwear? And he, he blamed it on Albert. He said it was <laughs> Albert's decision. I told him I wouldn't come back unless he was in his underwear. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> And we tuned in just for that. Like for me, I didn't I didn't see any torture or anything like that. I just saw a wonderful montage of a man strapped to a chair. I don't know what else happened. You know, it's so funny because we, we shot it a long time ago. Yeah. I completely forgot, Rob, that you were in your underwear. And I think as we were shooting it, I I did I wasn't thinking about Oh my God, how wackadoodle is this or creepy doodle is this? Is this torturing this guy in his underwear? I think I was just so worried about learning my lines and not really hurting you when I hit you in the head with a stick oh. <laughs> and I pulled your hair back. Or <laughs> it's, just, it's like after every scene, it was like, Oh my God, Rob, I'm sorry. Are you okay? No, 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 no. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you. She was the best. If anybody's going to beat, if anybody's going to beat my ass, let it be Cassie. <laughs> Let it be Cassie. But we were exhausted. We were exhausted. Very exhausted. They, they really, they did an awesome job writing it. Like the whole crew, you know, Ron and his team and, you know, the producers, there were, there was, you know, there was a lot of like care with it. And, you know, it was, it was Cassie's show. She had, she had the boatload. I just had to, I just kind of had to endure the, the, yeah, the pain. You but. sold it because with every little ache and pain, you acted like I was sawing your leg off. <laughs> I mean, it's like, oh my God, this is awful. I'm never going to work in daytime again. <laughs> Just no, torture you, movies. I, I feel like, you know, this was definitely um, interesting for, for us as fans to watch because I think we also had to kind of grasp, like, why is Eve going to this extent and this length 
to really torture Ben. Um, and we, we know that the justification was, was because he killed um, her daughter. But I also, I mentioned last week because we had this, this beautiful explanation from um, Chloe, from Nadia Bjorland, about like how Eve was uh, when she, you know, uh, came back from Salem to New York and some of the transitions. And I thought, oh, I feel like Eve is like, she's hitting like a mental breakdown maybe because it's now just her. She's all alone. Every, like she's lost Jack, she's lost her, her daughter. Life as she's known it is not the same because it's just her. Um, but I'm curious, Cassie, for you, how were you able to kind of justify Eve and, and what she was going to do to Ben so that you could really play into the, the role? Well, I could justify anything for a paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we all can. We all can. If the, if the check cashes, well, I'm doing it. <laughs> that being said, you know, Eve is complicated and she's terribly broken. Mm -hmm. And I've really struggled with trying to make her not so heavy because mm -hmm. I, you know, it's, that's, I don't want to be one noted, but, um, you know, the writers wanted to keep her in that vein and there's certainly, they never finished. There's so much unfinished business between Ben and Eve and she mm -hmm. never really got to have justice for her daughter and, you know, Ben's acting like he's all healthy and everything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, I think it, it was good. I think it was, it was painful to watch. I mean, mm -hmm. I was really nervous about how it was going to be embraced. So yeah, when you yeah. invited me to do this, I want to say three weeks ago, I was like, no, oh, I can't because I don't know. I, I, I don't oh. know. I mean, maybe, what if they think they hate me? Uh, no, but, no, but this is... Know. But this is why, because I think with when we do get together and we're, we're able to get more insight, I think it's it's better for us to know, like, what was your mindset? What what did you think about this? Like, what were you hoping for? So that way, um, because it, it, it was it was tough at times because like the torture and and and, you know, Rob, you like really showing like the pain. And then they were flipping those pictures so fast. I was like, I think at some point he's gonna get confused as to like, you know, what what he's supposed to like and not like. But but you just, you felt, you felt so much. And so like, I feel like having a discussion is kind of like, it gives us better insight as, as to like, you know, what this meant for, for you all. So I'm glad you came on because I don't want you to feel like, oh no, I don't know. Oh, so, it's so good to see you. It's, it's always, good, it's so good to see you. Oh, it's good to talk about this show. The show's really doing great. And it's, you know, the, the challenge is to make it real without being over the top soapy. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, I, I have no frame of reference because I don't know how to freaking brainwash anybody. And I don't, I'm not a mean person in real yeah, life. Yeah. So that's yeah, why yeah. I would go home and go, oh, geez, I need a martini. I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. What? No, she what? was fantastic. She was take, fantastic. Take us to the, the filming of, of those scenes. Um, you know, what... I, I know it was exhausting, but like in those moments, like what was it like um, for for you all to like really play this out to to really hear you know what Eve had to say about Paige and like playing the song and seeing the pictures and also the the lovely like mannequin video monitor of you know Victoria like giving Crazy. you like you know all of this and. Ooh, yeah. And then the like the neck like all of that like what what was it like during that filming for for both of you? I think that the the uh, you going to say <laughs> I, mean, I I just think everyone was kind of excited. Production was very excited about the set for one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, it's not you know lovey dovey typical soap opera stuff. And I think Albert Alar, our producer, kind of digs that dark side and we went to the dark side and absolutely you know i didn't know uh, you know you could have played it 80 million different ways i mean i could have made her totally whack a doodle but yeah i wanted it to be connected to her pain 
-hmm. And her only reason for doing this is she wanted to make Ben feel that same pain. So that's my, that was kind of maybe a one note pony, but I tried to give it as much color as I could. And Rob <laughs> was easy to play off of because he, it was excruciating to, yeah. to watch him, you know, deal with it. What, what about for you, Rob? What, what were those scenes like she, for, for you? She really, she really touched on it. I mean, you know, it was so much different than stuff that was just preceding that with the wedding being so beautiful and everything from there, it was such a high, quick contrast of, you know, we went from a really you know, peaceful, loving uh, light to mm -hmm. this dark corridor of, of both of their lives that they both are being like stripped down for literally. And, uh, you know, tortured. Um, oh. And it was, it was honestly, I, I had an, I had an awesome time, first of all. And anytime I get to work with Cassie, it's, it's always great. You know, we, we, we rehearse, you know, everybody, we all bust our ass there, but um, Cassie makes it a point to, to work, work it as much as we can. And I love that. I love being able to rehearse and I love, you know, having somebody to, to, to really grind it out with. So he can come to my dressing room in his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Uh, it was awesome. It was so, awesome. Speaking of, of know, wardrobe. I, yeah, I want to know. I, I was just going there. I want to know who picked Eve's disco dresses for the occasion. Oh, because... Richard Bloor, <laughs> our, our costume designer is fabulous. I thought for sure, you know, I would be like haggard and, you know, really wackadoodle. But he goes, oh, no, you're going to be like, what do you think about this dress? I went like, that red sequin thing? <laughs> like, okay, I'm gonna have to hold my stomach in. I don't know if I can hold my stomach in and say these lines and hit him with the stick at the same time. <laughs> well, I I think you pulled it off fabulously because when that door opened and you came sauntering in, I was like, okay, now this is Eve always comes back with with a look and and with an entrance, um, but then. <laughs> But then I got tickled because uh, Eve Eve said that she was at the wedding and she was hiding at the wedding. And my <laughs> thought was, how was she hiding with all them um, sparkles and like somebody could have pointed her out easily. Like if I was at the wedding, I would have been like, who that in the corner? Because they look real <laughs> shiny over there. Like that's like the flower girl. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, that, who that, that is in not the corner. A, who that who that over there taking pictures and stuff? I'm like, that's not a dress that you show up and hide in. That is a that is a dress you make an entrance in. Oh no, right? it's crazy. We shot the um first segment in the red dress uh right before Thanksgiving break. And then mm -hmm. the studio was dark until I wanna say mid January. Yeah. So I came back and we fit we finished up. February 1st through Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. So we didn't shoot them consecutively and I didn't even know I was coming back. Mm. I shot my show before Thanksgiving. You know, they don't tell you anything. So right. or they didn't tell me anything. Um, <laughs> and so I, when I went home for Christmas, I thought, well, I don't know if they're gonna be coming back. Like, oh, you're gonna be going back. You gotta finish up the story. I said, Oh, I've gone upstairs and never come down many times. <laughs> you never know. I mean, they ship me off to New York, you know, every other year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, um, As, how do you, like, just speaking on that, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about them bringing you on and then, because you're right, Eve is this character who is in Salem, then she's gone. In Salem, then she's gone. It's always great when she's in Salem. We always enjoy it. But how do you feel as an actor? Like, uh, like, are you always told when you're coming back that it's just going to be like X amount of months or episodes? Or do you, are, are you are you just used to kind of just showing up and kind of going with it? And if they call you back, they call you back or? Well, I've learned to do that. I have not been used to that in my previous career because I've always been um, a pretty heavy character on the show like one like to live for 19 years or whatever mm -hmm. and but eve is a perennial supporting character she is there she, i call her a big spoon she's there to stir shit you know so, 
That's what, <laughs> what she does. And when they, when everybody's had a taste of enough of that, they, they send her on her way and they wait till some other moment for her to blow things up. And I didn't even know that Eve had blown up the wedding. So I get oh. this and I'm like going, oh my gosh, you blew up the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I blew that. <laughs> I am so. I will never work again on this show. <laughs> the fans will hate me forever. So no, I, not even close. Once, once you know that, you just kind of go with it and have fun. And I said, well, okay, I'm going to. I've never played this far over the uh, villain line. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I played bad girls sex pots and aging sluts but this one <laughs> is uh, uh this this was interesting and it was fun and rob made it fun i mean we we had a good time and he is such a wonderful professional works so hard and he's a movie star yeah yeah um you already know i love you Cass. i appreciate you <laughs> You know, I, I think I think we need a contract spoon in Salem as soon as possible because we we are eating, we're eating, we're eating. Yeah, there are a lot of people that are um, leaving the show. It looks like it's like. Well, that what a perfect time! What a what a perfect time for for some people to join. Yeah, I'm I'm here for it. And look, y'all know I've been trying to sneak my way onto the show too. So I'm looking like what contracts oh, are up and available? Hell like, yes. Hell yes. You Eve sidekick. But suddenly oh, we'll, we'll be watching an awesome. episode and suddenly the role of Vincent will be played by Tony Moore Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I'm here for it. And look, if I, I don't know how that scene would have went if I had played Vincent because I would have been like, <laughs> y'all want this man in his drawers like that? Okay, well, listen, um, you, I'm about to. Are you sure you don't want to? Maybe you I want, need to massage him. Do I need to kiss him? Like you, you don't want to cover. Look, I would have been like, let me, let me help you up. Can we just write more scenes where I'm helping him up, where I'm grabbing him, like I'm, you know, something. I'm going to bitch slap Eve here. <laughs> you, guys you guys are fucking killing me. Um, <laughs> I, thought, I thought Michael Tay, I think that's his name, who played Vincent, mm -hmm. did a really great job too. He, mm -hmm. he really did. And I, Absolutely. I like. I like that they had him connected with Dr. Rolf, unless we would have been like, well, how does he know how to do this? Because the only person yeah. in Salem we know that can do something to this magnitude is Rolf. And right. uh, we, were, we were talking about um, the scene, Rob, that you had with him um, in uh, Mar Dr. Marlena's office. Um, yep. That was great, <laughs> by the way. It was really good. But the first thing that I, mentioned i was like so when he walked in and saw that the office was a little dark and there was vincent he didn't think about running like i would have said nope and would have just like <laughs> it's just like it. wrong room <laughs> no, <laughs> like walking like oh i'm so sorry i but but it's it it, <laughs> it was a great play because it made us understand where kind of the brainwashing is the like you're really yeah, like he's really under his control and also still the extent that Eve is going through to ensure that this man is just as unhappy as as she is. Now she's she's parading around Salem in a questionable <laughs> wig. <laughs> in a very questionable wig. Um, I said uh, we we all thought like yeah. who who did that to that lady? So, we'll put this. You know what they they came in. I didn't even know I was going to be really wearing a wig. You look at the script, and she's in uh, disguise, so that in a wig. And I went, oh, really, wig? So they had like three wigs for me, and one was one that I think Dorian or Robin Strasser looked uh -huh. kind of a red one. Kind of went, I looked like um, Little Orphan Annie. <laughs> and then I put on that black wig, and I was, because it's so different than my because my hair is long. My yeah, hair, my hair is pretty long. Yeah. So, Woo. yeah. Okay. So, trying to get that up in that little wig, you know, you can see all the all this shit hanging out. But I didn't care. <laughs> I thought that was part of it. And you know, I thought she was. I was trying to channel my inner um, Matrix look. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Well. We'll we'll go with 
it. We were I going. I don't know. It's, you know what? I didn't know I was going to have to wear it for yeah. so many scenes, too. Yeah. I thought, you know, I'd come in and I'd take it off and go, damn, nobody recognized me. Now I can go out and do whatever. But no, they're like, no, you have to wear that wig again. I said, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. The next day, too. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, geez. I would have picked a different wig. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's that's that moment like you walk in and it's like listen y'all I got my own so like what do we think about oh. her like will this one work or like will I this don't one... have other wigs man I'm oh, doing everything what... I can to keep my own hair I mean oh, after what... cancer man this is long it's and it looks good but look you could have called me I would have rallied up some of my drag queen friends and be like listen we got to get Cassie in a good wig before <laughs> she get on this TV well why didn't you help me out you, and look I am always a phone call away okay baby Okay. You, you look, honey, you let me know. I thought I, I thought they had a good handle on you when they put you in the red sequence dress and then they oh. gave you the, the wig. And I was like, oh, no, they doing my girl wrong. I got oh, to rush down and help. Um, a lot of a lot of fans uh, want to know uh, from you, Rob, how do you feel about the shift in the, the storyline? Because the Ben Sierra wedding was supposed to be this huge grand like you know moment in your in, in you know the Ben and Sierra love story um and something that we all had been waiting for and then literally it all blew up in our faces and now here we are with with this um yeah. what how did how do you feel about this this shift well I mean I'm, I'm fully aware of how it works you know uh, the key is to keep keep them fighting to get to each other, no matter what. So even on their wedding day, unfortunately, I think a lot of fans wanted to see them happier a little bit more, for sure, but- A lot um, of fans wanted that. Yeah. Yeah, so I know they wanted it at least longer than, you know, at least made it to the car outside of the church, you know? Yeah. We didn't yeah. even make it to the damn car, um, but I get it. And I, I like adding another layer to it. Why not, man? I mean, this is daytime. This is something where these, you know, you see couples go on for years and years and years. We, we have such a crazy amount of hurdles and obstacles in such a short amount of time together as Ben and Sierra that it's like, it's insane. So I was like, might as well just keep it going, man. Keep it going, yeah. keep them fighting, keep them fighting, make them fight for it because that's what we're all along for is that journey of that. But, yeah. um, I, you know, it, it's more so the stuff that's starting to air now of where Ben was at that I was a little bit more hesitant about. Um, you know, first of all, I've never played being brainwashed. I've never experienced anything like that. So I tried to find some kind of truth in it and, and ground it in, you know, just his love, keeping him calm and, and right and in, in, in the in the light, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, having scenes with, with Vincent as, uh, you know, Michael as Vincent um, really brings it back out of him. And it was just that struggle of, of you know, keeping the light, you know, keeping the light no matter what and, you know, grounding it in love and not letting him just fly off the handles and do these things. Yeah. Um, when I first read it, I was like, oh, shit, here we go again. I was like, <laughs> they're, gonna, they're sending me down the rabbit hole again, man. This ain't going to go good. There's going to be a lot of angry people. I was no, like, no. you cannot have him doing what he's doing, but we're pushing yeah. it, man. We're yeah, pushing we don't it. No, um, people, a lot of people, fans out there think, Oh, you must know what's going to happen, whatever. I opened the script, and that's how I found out. No, nobody invited me back and said, "Hey, come on up to the office, and let me tell you what's going to happen." Sure. You can wear a stupid wig. And you're <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And like, I didn't know. I didn't know. So I just read it in the script. Yeah, I I, I feel like as we we you know had many conversations with with you all over the years and i think that's how a lot of times you guys find out about what's happening next is that you're like oh, okay another day at work and wait yeah what I like say, yeah. I, I feel like that's how that's how it it, it always is um well, that's how when a lot of you guys if i see if i read something wild if i see something like that i definitely bring to somebody's attention when i can just so i you know i don't I, I just need like some clarity of where we're going with this to a degree. I understand how this works where they probably don't even know all the answers for sure at certain moments, but, and only so much is scripted out, but as an actor, we need to kind of know a little bit about where we're going. I'm all about like living in that freedom space, something new every day. Great. But mm -hmm. we need to know a little bit of clarity on just so everybody's on the same page when we're telling the story. Because, you know? because we also shoot things out of sequence. So you don't want all, to all be way ahead of schedule. And they're like, well, you can't play that because that's what you're going to be doing next week. And I said, well, I already shot last. You know, it's like, ah. 
So yeah, yeah. There, there was a point. Where, so it's good if somebody would clarify things. Yeah, there was a point That's multiple times we were, we're we're shooting over a stretch of for at least some stuff with Ben. I remember it was almost like ten or eleven shows deep from. 11 different episodes apart picking up stuff so it was like you know I, you know you know we all care we all want to do good work and those are certain things we we definitely question or you know we definitely speak up if we if we have the time to as well but like yeah. any, anytime i read something that's really different than what i've been playing or really a big change of where things are going i'll definitely question it mm -hmm. um but you know just riding it out man enjoying the right. journey trust the process it's well been, listen it's you you guys are y'all are killing it like for for just any information that you have for for the scenes or storyline and you guys to be able to go in and give the performances that you have like i think that's a testament to the type of talent that you both have and it it definitely shows because we're as fans we're in this journey with you and we're feeling all the feels we're we're going through all of the motions even if you guys don't fully understand what's going to happen in the next show, like we're still there, like just like a sponge, just sucking it all in. So thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Michael, did you, you had something? Yeah. Um, Cassie mentioned that, you know, Rob was a movie star and some people in the chat were talking about a movie that's um, I believe on Amazon mm. that uh, called Papa. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. That was it was actually I, I did it a long time ago. We started shooting that in like, my God, like probably like five years ago, almost. Um, wow. And it was something that got released overseas. It was an international film festival project. It just had a lot of great actors. Um, so when I auditioned for it, I, I just saw the on the on the breakdown. Um, story seemed cool itself and, and just the list of talent on there, the names were pretty awesome and I was like of course like at least go out for it and um you know I booked it and we shot it and ended up being this wild wild project that took a very long time to finish um <laughs> it was a, it was a passion project of um of, of the man who wrote it Dan Israeli um it was about a book that he had written about some of his personal life and and um his family so to speak so there was a lot of great story but um you know we we luckily had some great actors to kind of fix issues along the way because it was a journey uh of filming it but but i got to work with amazing actors and for that i was super grateful for sure it was like awesome like doing different mediums like you've done film you've done daytime i don't know maybe you've done some prime time like do you prefer like the the kind of he hectic excuse me the hectic schedule of daytime where you're like you're in it for a short amount of time and then you move on to the next thing you're in it on to the next thing or do you prefer like with film having a little bit more more time to prepare or uh, like the, having that extra time or do you actually prefer and this is for you too cassie because i know you've done the gamut of everything like the, just like the the faster pace or do you prefer a slower pace when you're when you're working uh i mean I just feel at home at days. I feel at home with our crew and our, our, and my character. I feel like I can hop into Ben, you know, I can hop into him, um, to a degree, you know, it's just something I, I, I have a very clear point of view for him. Um, when you start a new film, I mean, it's completely different and it, you have to outline everything and you do know the entire story. So, uh, it can be more work like that for sure, but the tediousness and the, the drill pace of, of, of daytime is, there's nothing else like it, man. And that's why you see, you know, people like Cassie who can kill this stuff all the time, no matter what's thrown at her for years and years. And you see other <laughs> familiar faces, you know, always in daytime, because if you can do it, it's rare, I feel. You know, I know great actors that couldn't really hang in daytime just because of the pace and at, at the clip you're moving and just, you know, uh, just the, the sheer like amount of work we're putting out every day. We, we're shooting over hundred pages a day, eight episodes a week. It's, it's wild, you know, and um, if I feel like some of us can be like the hardest working people in town, uh, you know, films can be very easy sometimes if you're lucky enough to just hop on a good project and you're, you're, you got your trailer and you're, you've got to roll in for a couple of scenes and you're out like, cool. But, you know, this is like a, a fast moving machine to be a part of the days and daytime in general. So um, I, I enjoy doing it all, man. I want to just just want to get better <laughs> and do good work, you know. To me, good work is good work, whether it's a film or, or prime time or, or daytime. You know, good work is good work. 
Cassie, what about you? Well, Rob, you're going to continue to do good work because that's how you're de you're dedicated that way, and it's great. And I, I totally agree with you. It's it, it's hard to get in daytime. It's harder to keep your job because if you can't do it, you don't stay. But um, I love the pace of, of daytime. I always loved it. I wake up every morning. I used to wake up every morning, feel like I would fight to keep daytime on the air. Mm -hmm. And um, now, you know, I think they're holding their own, but it's, it's, it is tough. I, but I believe in it. I think it's one of the greatest forms of American entertainment. And um, it's heightened melodrama, but damn, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. Thank you. Yeah. Of course. I, um, by the way, Cassie, my mom wanted me to make sure I told you that she said hello. Um, I, I still will, a funny little story, my, my mom would come with me to the soap events that I would host. <clears throat> and the one year you came, Cassie, this was the first time, because my mom didn't watch days, so everyone was just kind of like, ah, you know, yay for them. Um, but she saw you and she leaned in to me and she was like, is that Blair? I said, yes, mom. And she was like, oh! So she was always like super excited because she watched One Life to Live all the time. So she was very excited to, to meet you. So before the show, she texted me and said, have a great show. Tell Cassie I said hi. This is for your mom. <laughs> oh, she's going to love that. Um, <laughs> Before uh, before we let you guys go, because you know we'll sit here and talk forever, um, and I don't want you guys to feel like you're being kidnapped. Um, someone in the chat, uh, Dwight had a great question for you, Rob, about um, the relationship with uh, with Ben and Will, and how you all navigated uh, that friendship. Because obviously, Ben killed Will. Um, but then uh, yeah, we, we laugh about it, man. We, me and Chandler, yeah. we, we laugh about it all the time. I mean, it's it's so wild, but it's awesome. Like we really we really embraced it. Like when we got to be, you know, ended up being like cellmates when we read mm -hmm. that script after the time jump. That's what started the whole thing. And yeah. as soon as I, read it, I was like, wow, they're gonna give a chance for Ben and Will to like hash this out and possibly become close, or maybe maybe one of them bugs out and kills each other. You know, mm -hmm. who knows? Um, Chandler's a really I good actor. Guess who would, I could guess who would probably bug out and kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> One of those characters. Maybe. Oh. Maybe. Or, or, or is that what the audience would expect? And all of a sudden, <laughs> Will, you know, Will goes a little wild, you know? <laughs> um, no, nah, Chandler's like a really good actor. He's a really smart guy. And uh, like, yeah, we just... He just it balances out. Will is so different than than Ben, so there's this natural like opposite type thing. And um, yeah, I thought it was really awesome. I was really grateful when they wrote that, and it all, and it helps Ben's case a little bit because he did bring Will back. We did let everybody know that Will was alive. He didn't kill him. Now we're good. So at least that's one check <laughs> off the, the killer sheet. You know. Now where's my daughter? <laughs> we're working on. It. We're gonna work on that one. <laughs> Jerry's out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this moment is, is like, I feel like I'm, I'm sitting on a Zoom in, in Horton Town Square um, and having to facilitate a conversation between Ben and, and E. <laughs> <laughs> um, for, for you, um, for, for both of you, um, after you all filmed uh, these scenes, um, I know that uh, there was worry about you know, how fans would, would take this. Um, but what were you hoping uh, that the fans would get from this um, with like your characters? Like what, like Cassie, what were you hoping fans would, would understand uh, from Eve and uh, Rob? What were you hoping fans would um, understand with, uh, with Ben during this? Well, I think I was hoping the fans would definitely see Eve's point of view as, as demented and as broken and shattered as it was because she was desperate mm -hmm. and she was desperate to, nobody else was helping her. And she's, she's always done everything the hard way and alone. 
and um, she just found that nice Vincent, and she found her a good partner in crime, and yeah. they just started the crazy wheel rolling, and that's kind of what happened. Yeah. But I, mean, I want the fans to like it and want to see more of it, and, and redemption's a really great thing. You know, bad, Ben's the ultimate uh, character that's had redemption. Mm -hmm. and it's hard to redeem a, a freaking serial killer, but they did it. Oh, and now I'm the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me, we have. <laughs> he we is have, the bad guy. What the? <laughs> we have had <laughs> many, many, many discussions on justifying like where Ben is now. Like we, so like, so now <laughs> we're like, <laughs> now we're like, listen, y'all, Eve. Like this is her breaking point. This is yeah. this is like she she has lost everything and and she has never fully been able to get over losing Paige. And it's I feel like every moment that she thought Ben was going to get brought to justice, it never happened because you even mentioned uh, Eve mentioned um, the um, uh, when he was almost executed, and then that didn't happen. And yeah. for me, uh, watching it, I was like, that's the moment. That's the moment where Eve was like, okay, if y'all aren't gonna do anything about it, then guess who's about to play karma? Me. And so she was exactly. like, she exactly. got on her phone and she was like, you know that can come brainwash somebody real quick. And, okay. And can you, and can you uh, uh, Amazon, can you send that red red? <laughs> can I get that prime please? Cause I need to, I need to see how it fits before, before I go to this win. <laughs> So I, I, I feel like if, if fans, um, you know, can just under, really, really understand and grasp what it's like to see someone who, who literally took your life away, you know, by, by killing your daughter, they can understand why this happened. But then on the flip side, we're like, no, we don't want Ben to go back to being the necktie killer because we fought for this long to justify what he did back then. And yeah, he now- But he played it so well because you played, I mean, you were, you were sorry that you killed my daughter. I mean, you, yeah. there, there's, I mean, I mean, it's bad and you know it was bad. And that's, that's one of the things that I always found interesting when we had scenes prior to this story arc is Ben let Eve hit him. He let, because he knew he deserved it. Mm -hmm. And I find that, I mean, the, the, the character's very, very multifaceted. Ben's character is, and, it, and Eve's is as well in that dynamic of that relationship. And he, he knows, and she knows he knows. Yeah, that was like one of the most important things for me. Like when we started this whole thing was, you know, this is not somebody who is, unconscious about what he has done he doesn't remember the details of it but this is something that he has lived with and you know it's something they didn't shy away from and they always kind of you know they wrote it so they you know he had to sleep in the bed that he made and um of course you know take he's he's gonna he's that's what i was gonna say about this what i want fans to take from this is you know even if this was him still trying to redeem himself he just had this he's marrying the love of his life and this happens right away and the, the struggle continues the everyday struggle continues. This guy has done horrific things and he's being made an example of, uh, you know, karma, you know, Eve taking over and, and playing that karma. And, and still, when you think you're out of it, you're not. And to just keep, keep on fighting and keep on, you know, keep on keeping on, keep yeah. on keeping on. Um, but, you know, the, it, the way it was done, I felt like it did it justice to a degree. I mean, it's not, it's not bringing Paige back, but it's, it's giving her the justice that she felt she didn't get yet. Mm -hmm. And I, I can stand behind, you know, fight for that anytime. So yeah. um, it was wild, man. And you know, it, it ain't over. It ain't over. There's still a lot more of that story still. And it's, it's wild. It's, well, it's, it's so wild. interesting. So. I, I always, you know, Ben, Paige and Eve knew Ben back in Florida. Remember that story when okay. we first started yeah. working? You waited, you were a waiter and you yes. waited on us. I mean, I wish, I wish we had, there had been more to that, that you had been made possibly stalking Paige even back then, but no, we didn't do any of that. Sure. But we were friendly sure. when we first 
when we first started yeah. working together and unbeknownst well, that was, us, like that when you were talking about when you've opened up the script and you're like wow i'm a super villain that's how i felt one day you know <laughs> i felt the same way i walked up i'm like hey albert um so I got a box of ties under my bed. This was me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> and I was like, okay. All right, y'all want to y'all want to see a killer, huh? Okay. All right. <laughs> That's it. Um, yeah, no, but I, re I remember that same moment, and it was like, what we we could dive into so much backstory with it. There's a lot of story there sure. potentially. You know, it could be it could be awesome. You know. Um, Cause maybe it was, maybe it was something completely innocent or maybe he, they knew somebody that I knew, or maybe you knew Ben's real mother or something down in Florida. Who knows? It could have, could have been a million different things. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, just interesting hey, stuff. you start, you know, fans will definitely tell you they, they watch a show and they go, Oh, I, they already know everything that's going to happen. Or they think that they know. <laughs> and some of their things right. are like pretty great. And then some of them are like, you are so off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Of course. So I, way of course. Off. I stopped yeah. guessing a long time ago. Like I have adopted this theory since we started this show. I'm just a fan with open arms. So like whatever, <laughs> whatever the show gives me, I'll accept it and then just wait to see how it plays out. Yeah. So um, on with it. We're wrong with you. Same. <laughs> I Same want I, I also wanted to ask you, Cassie, because um, we saw um, a recast of Claire. Yeah. Um, Isabel Durant came and you guys had a, a wonderful scene together where I guess within this first week this poor girl got <laughs> slapped and pushed <laughs> by by Eve so I was I, I wanted yeah. to find out from you uh, what was it like uh, working with with her and and kind of uh, keeping that that same uh, rapport that Eve and and Claire have but now well, it was, it was interesting because I, I came back and this was the second group of scenes that I did and I was really looking forward to working with uh, um, Olivia. Um, Olivia. And because I love her and she yes. says we, we'd have such a really great rapport. So I went, oh, shoot, they recast. First of all, like, why? Yeah. Uh, but then Olivia's had had another project. But um, Isabel. Is there any yeah. uh -huh. She was lovely. And yeah. it was important to, for me, to allow her to feel comfortable because she was just, you know, it's, it's hard to, you know, to jump on the uh, hamster wheel. And we're on the hamster wheel. Like, yeah. blah, blah, blah. and when you're young and just starting out and you're working with some heavy hitters, it's, it's, it's tough and you have heavy dialogue. Mm -hmm. But and I try to treat every actor that I work with the same. I I want to be remembered as a giving actress. So I want to be there to support them because you're only as good as your as your scene partner. So um, I thought she did, she really handled her stuff really well. Albert mm -hmm. was there to give her notes, but she she was she was good. Yeah. Yeah. She 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 was like, yes, I feel like she kind of slipped into it pretty, pretty well, like just in the overall form of it. I mean, I think you might have worked with the right off the bat before anybody, I think. You had the first scenes with her, right? Yeah. Um, I think she had worked um, maybe with Deidre. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Still, yeah, I mean, yeah, jumping in right in with you guys, you know, because I think it was like day two um, that she was there or day three that we finally had some scenes, but I was just watching watching on the monitor because I read with a bunch of Claire's, you know, they, they were casting for it for a while. And um, they, I don't think they really fell for anybody. They had some other people like in mind, but Isabel came out of nowhere and she was the only one that I didn't read with uh, in auditions. And I, she, I thought she was great. She was very comfortable and she was really, she really jumped in like right away, like smoothly. I didn't feel like she was super nervous and we, we really just started, but um, she was very good. She was working, I think in Australia. Yeah. I believe. I didn't even um, see that she had an accent. That's what I'm saying. That, that well, well, accent well, is and I'm like, And she yeah, has yeah. short hair. And she has all yes. this, you know, they, they made her, you know, look a yeah. lot like Olivia. And uh, um, it was like, wow. Yeah, I'm yeah. She, yeah, she's, yeah, she's the real deal. She was, she's really good. I, I, mean, I mean, we just started, but she was, um, she was the real deal, man. Like, yeah, very comfortable for like jumping into the new show. 
probably with you guys, I'd be, I'm still nervous when I, when I got to work with you guys, you guys are the best, you know, <laughs> I'm nervous every scene every day, five, four, three, two. I'm like, fierce I'm sweating. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Hot flash, hot flash. <laughs> it's so funny because you always say that we'll be like downstairs you're like i'm a little nervous i'm like you're gonna kill this like you I always just, kill this i get nervous all you, when you say that i'm like i'm like you're like literally the like the pro and i'm like now i'm nervous i'm like cassie damn it now i'm nervous <laughs> <laughs> no you guys you guys are all super talented and, and isabel came in and like really you know got the foundation of of claire that was that olivia um, had set and then Lindsay Arnold coming in as as Allie like another yeah. person who like came in and just like just killing it like killed you it, know dude. she killed it she she was one of the first to read too uh it was a different role I believe oh no it was for that uh mm -hmm. it was for for ultimately for Allie um yeah she, I remember I did read with her um mm -hmm. I read with a, a bunch but she was amazing and they loved her right away yeah. And yeah, the rest, I mean, to see her show up, she kills it. She's killed. I, I haven't even, and I, I haven't even worked with her. You know, I just was doing the read. Yeah. But uh, like, we haven't really had any scenes together or anything like that. But she's, she seems to just be like killing it. So yeah. it's awesome, man. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, okay, for, for realsies, before we head out, Michael, did you have, uh, I see Bimby has, uh, has made an appearance oh, yeah. over there. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> Did you have oh, anything God, before we uh, before we head out? Uh, no, I just want to thank you guys for joining us. And it's been, for me as a viewer, this little arc you guys have, have done has been very entertaining. It's a little bit out of the ordinary for for what we usually see on, on the show. And so it was, it's weird to say that seeing torture scenes was, was nice because it wasn't nice. <laughs> it's something different, you know, and it was very compelling and, Part of the reason it was compelling is because you guys sold it. You got you and Michael, who played Vincent, just sold it, and it was just like I, I you know, you st we kind of judge judge it like how distracted are we? Like how much am I looking at my phone when I'm watching the show? And I don't think I looked at my phone once during any of your scenes because I just didn't want to miss it. Mm -hmm. And it was just it was so fabulous, and and so thank you for coming on and and letting us chat in with you. Yeah, Thanks, it was. Man. It, that's it the best really, that's the best comp one of the best compliments we could get. Yeah, Thank you. Absolutely. Bimby yeah. enjoyed it too. Watch with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys definitely like killed it. And like I said before, we we were on this journey with you guys and and feeling every moment. We were feeling for Eve. We were feeling for Ben. We were watching those pictures flip back and forth. We didn't know how to feel at one point. So like it all like really came together really well. And then I also have to have to thank both of you, both you, uh, Rob and Cassie, for just always being open to coming on our show and just having a good time and talking about your work and the show and everything like that. Like I've I've gone back and looked at some of our, our older episodes and I'm like, man, they've been hanging tough with us for some years. How did they ever survive this craziness <laughs> of this show? Um, so I, I just want to thank you guys for, for always supporting us and, and we truly appreciate the work that you guys do. Yes. No, and likewise, and thank you guys. Thank you guys for doing what you do. Right, yeah. We'll come hang anytime. Perfect. Oh, and uh, Rob, my mom just texted me and said, take off your shirt. No lie. I'm not going to, like, my mom. Your mom. Well, mother knows best. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, I, I literally looked down That's at my for phone. Daytime. That's for daytime. My, my, my mom, she's like, she literally said, tell Rob to take off that shirt with a smiley face. And I just put LOL. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, my, my mom is now hooked on the show. I don't know when this happened, but, like, oh, she calls good. me. And she's like, did you see what happened on the show? And I'm like, I haven't watched it yet. So this is our <laughs> our our time together. So there you are, Mom. <laughs> Tell Mama I said hi. I will. Um, well, thank you guys so much for, for coming on and uh, continue to stay safe um, during all of this. And we wish you nothing but the best and well wishes. And um, hopefully we'll have you guys back on to talk about more of this crazy storyline that's happening. Hey, Rob, will you tell everybody on set when you start back in September that I love and miss them? Oh, you want me to do that? I I'll do, do that on one, one condition. What is it? You got that red dress? Oh, <laughs> oh I don't have that red dress. I tell you what, what you should do, go ask Richard Bluer, 
you wear the red dress Ooh. and put on the black wig and go, Cassie and Divina told me to show up <laughs> <laughs> and wish you guys the very best. I will, I love them and miss them. I will Aww. tell everybody, of course. <laughs> and you don't have to wear the red dress, but if you want to. No, I want you to wear it. You wear it. You want me to wear it? I yeah. don't know if I can pull it off as good as you. I will give it a. I'll give it a run. You, 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 okay, you can just keep it at your feet. You'll be fine. <laughs> I'll carry it over my shoulder. Uh, well, we we miss you. I miss everybody at work, but you know I miss you always. And um, I hope you're staying safe. Oh, you're staying well, safe. Well, hopefully this is. You know, we've been known to start uh, hashtags here on the show to bring people back. So I think we're gonna officially start the hashtag Bring Back Eve, so that everyone can start like sending that out and tweeting it out and everything like that because I'm with it. you know fans have a voice and then rob when you get back in september we expect you to tweet out that photo of you in the red dress um and the wig right. and hey, don't, then, don't put that on me don't put yeah, that on we're, we're, we're gonna put we're gonna put that on you and then once you have the red dress in your possession take it home and send it to cassie so yeah. that way she can have it because i feel like that's a piece that you should have and if you can I'm, I'm gonna get that. Listen, I don't know if I'm gonna wear it, but I'm gonna get that thing and I'm gonna send it express mail to Cassie's address. She's gonna keep that dress. And I'm, and gonna, this, and I'm gonna send it a stick. I just, I just stick stacked too. five cords of wood last week. That's where you'll, you'll find me out in my red sequin dress stacking wood. I'll be like, <laughs> that's the picture we wanna see. That's the picture we wanna see. Well, I, I feel like that's two pictures. We got Rob in the red dress, and then we got Cassie doing uh, woodwork in the red dress. I love it. I'm here for okay, it. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take a picture of that. You know, when they used to right. send around the hat, Stanley, they could send around the dress. It can be okay. like right. the, the adventures of the dress. I love it. There you go. It's like, it's like part two of the traveling pants is now the traveling okay. sequin dress. <laughs> we'll get it out there. <laughs> Well, All right, you guys. You guys. Well, thank Love you guys. You. Miss you guys, <laughs> and best of luck. Of course, thank you for coming on, and we'll do this again. I don't even know how to turn any of this off, so <laughs> I might be here for like a couple of days. <laughs> Cassie's just gonna sit there and go, "Y'all can't get rid of me." Just <laughs> <laughs> think about me. I'm, I'm, gonna, do I'm gonna I'll, go. I'll do it. All right. Okay. Love you. you guys. Are the best. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. Again. Bye, you guys. See you guys. Uh, let's Turn see. me off. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna. Oh, here we go. Boom. There you go. Uh, no, I'm and, still here. Okay, now you're going. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right. Oh, that was so much fun. I really hope that you guys uh, enjoyed that. Um, thank you so much to Rob and Cassie for coming on. Uh, yeah. We really appreciate that. We hope that you guys appreciated it. Uh, Michael Mattis, before we yeah. head out, tell yeah. the kind folks where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at ML Mattis, and I need to give my husband a little promo right here. Yes. Because he has a new mask venture, because uh, with COVID not going anywhere, uh, masks aren't going anywhere. So he is starting his own Etsy, um, selling these uh, not only antibacterial, antiviral, but water resistant masks that come in black and white. There are four ninety nine, very affordable, and just you know, very stylish. Just go over. Oh, look at that! They cover, they cover everything, and yeah, it's water resistant. And he's gonna um, start his own Etsy. We're in the process of getting the site up, uh, but if you guys are interested, you can just uh, reach out to me through my social, ML Mattis, and uh, we will get you hooked up with a mask. There you go. So um, you guys make sure you you follow uh, Michael on uh, Instagram. And if you need a mask, which everyone should be wearing Twitter. a mask. I, I've unblocked my Twitter. I realized everyone that's tried to follow me on Twitter couldn't because I, I blocked everybody. Uh, so I've gone on and I've unblocked everybody. So you can now follow me and message me on, on Twitter and Instagram. Well, make sure you do that so that we can show full support to, to yeah. um, 
the hubby. Um, and of course, you can you guys can follow us uh, right here on YouTube. You're already here, so make sure you click subscribe. Make sure you like this video. Also, uh, we're on Instagram and Facebook, Dish and Days, and underscore Dish and Days on Twitter. And you can find me at Lounge with Tony on all social media platforms. Um, so thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll be back next Sunday for another full dish of your favorite NPC soap opera, Days of Our Lives. Have a great Sunday, everyone. Bye. Okay. okay.